80s show. Avenue for the start. Today on your favorite celebrity show, we shall be on the menu today. We shall be bringing you an exclusive interview with one of Nigeria's politicians, uh, the former governor of Ogun State, Otumba Binga Daniel. Who is Otumba Binga Daniel? His motive for the youth on entertainment. What you need to know about his career. Listen attentively to the interview. The world of entertainment is a very big, you know. Uh, big industry probably I don't know which one is bigger between entertainment and sports but I think entertainment is even bigger than uh, sports um, it's unfortunate that in our country we didn't look at it in time our parents just you know advised us to go for the professional courses the humanities and so on and so forth <laughs> in those days when you tell somebody you want to go and study music or, or, or theater arts you are derided as some serious but, uh, but these days, everybody has now seen that there's a whole lot that can happen in entertainment. I discovered this a long while ago, and that's why I tried my best within the limits of our resources to promote uh, this, sort of, this sort of things. Now that it has become big, um, when you look at the lives of uh, Michael Jackson, who was just a young man with his sweet sibling, dancing on the street of New York, uh, you know, uh, James Brown and people like that. Nobody took them seriously. But look at the latter years of uh, uh, Jackson. I, I don't know of any professional that Jackson did not employ. He has doctors, physiotherapists, got uh, voice therapies, accountants, name it. Everybody that went and studied the professional came to become, you know, employees of... Uh, uh, so that really is a clear evaluation of what entertainment industry is all about. And I think w what we need to do is to continue to encourage uh, the younger ones. I'm happy that today because when we were in school, we go to parties, nobody listens to any Nigerian music. In fact, the, the closest is probably to listen to Fela occasionally. Uh, if you play Juju, they will just laugh at you. It has to be American, Shalama, Kula, the gang. But these days, I'm so excited that, you know, we go to our various social functions now. The younger people are listening to, you know, Nigerian artists who are also doing very, very well. So, whatever we need to do to encourage this industry is what we have to do in all ramifications. You need to appreciate that when you're going into uh, the National Assembly, you are now making laws. You are not uh, uh, performing executive functions. And the only thing one can do is to look at if they have some constraints that can be legislated uh, on. We look at those constraints and try to push it forward by way of legislation. That's about all uh, one can do, except the few things you can do from your personal perspective, supporting youth empowerment program, youth development program, and things like that, yes. Uh, it's what we call the political academy. And this one we established about 10 years ago is completely uh, a non-profit initiative, basically to enlighten, educate the younger elements, to let them appreciate that uh, you know, there is really nothing wrong in them uh, playing politics, but to also uh, let them know that there are ethos, there are rules, there are ethics, and to preach the correct ethics to them. Politics is not about having failed in everything you do. What next? Let me go and run for politics. Oh, bad, that's what we see today. And that is actually part of the reason why the quality of participation is very, very poor. But we think with that political academy which we have been running in the last uh, 10 years, we have also been able to impact positively. Uh, I know a number of people who have gone through the academy and who are now in various political positions. And I can see that there is a difference in what they do, the quality of their output, the quality of their behavior based on some of the things that they've um, been able to learn. So those are some of the things that look at you from the perspective of challenges. I'm not one of those people who think that the youth, the youths uh, are marginalized. Yes, they should be. They should be encouraged. They can be encouraged, but they should just go out there and prove their worth. Whether anybody likes it or not, once you do what you have to do, you'll be noticed. Um, that's my own uh, understanding of what uh, has to. Be. They should just go out there. 
Um, I wouldn't know, say I was a youth when I became governor, but I was governor at 47. You know, and there are other people who have been governors in other locations, even below, be below 40. Uh, so if they can do it, why not? And like we usually say, all the people who have ruled us in the past, they were in their 30s and their 40s, military or civilian, all of them without exception, military and civilian. You know, I think that uh, by 1959, when Chiva Olo, Olo became Premier of the Western Union in 1951, I think he was barely 40. And all the things he did, which we are talking about, he had finished it before he became 50. So uh, he went out there. And while he was there, there were old, older people who respected him and who, who, who considered leadership of him because of the quality of what they see. So basically, what we did, our youth need to do, whatever they want to do, they should try to excel. When you excel, people will have no choice. They will notice you and they will put you forward. But I think the problem basically is that our younger elements today, Rather than excel, they just think that there must be networking and there must be shortcuts uh, to achieving whatever. Those things can happen, but they are usually short-lived. But what people cannot take away from you is the quality of education you give yourself, the quality of exposure, you know, the quality of information, and the quality of your brain. Once that is there, you know, the rest will fall, fall in line. That's my own position. Good thing there are drawbacks, but part of the greatest thing that I think has happened uh, is social media, to polity, to everything. Because now you can't hide. You know, you, you can't hide. If you write a secret letter before, which they call secret, the next day that secret letter is on the internet. So there is no secret again. So the only thing that you can do going forward is to be transparent in whatever we do. And once you are transparent, you have nothing to hide. There is really no issue. I am very, very happy the role social media has been playing in the polity. It's occasionally when I have time, I play a little bit of golf. Uh, some of the other things may be boring, but ping pong, that's it. Of course, I like to listen to music and sometimes I socialize. Important for them to know, uh, let me put it this way. I'm not aware of any vocation where you cannot be successful financially. If you're a furniture maker, make good furniture, for God's sake. The market is limitless. But what you have is the carpenters who don't know how to make straight lines and then they do the chair, the thing is all standing where nobody's going to buy. And they say that because they are not proficient in what they are doing. If you are an electrician, I'm not saying an electrical engineer, an electrician, just be a good one. Because out of 10 electricians you find on the streets, if you give nine of them job, it's rubbish you'll get. So they will say there is no job. There is job. Because they cannot afford to do quality job. So my advice to our younger people, and I'm serious about it, why do Nigerians have to go to Bennett to go and bring bricklayers? And people who will do uh, POP, why? It's because our people, they don't have a better brain, but somehow they have tried to learn what they, are, what, what they know how to, and we have to, we bring them like expatriates here. You know, and yet you see our boys on the street, they say there is no work. They are putting stick on the road, collecting pittance from motorists, rather than going to learn something. So they must learn something. And whatever they learn, they should not learn it half-heartedly. They should learn it and be proficient and efficient. And I can tell you, they can make it without any problem. This is me, K1, the ultimate, the king of Fiji music. Hi, what up, bitches? I'm Mavex to the Viper, aka VC Oshama. Hi, I'm Tarina Patel. Harry Song, aka Mr. Songs, and this is the ATL Show. My name is Benga Denka the first, and you are watching Avenue with the Stars, the ATL Show. Don't stop watching. And that's our package for you this week. Do well to join us again next week as we bring you the trending music of last month. Watch this and more next week on your best celebrity program on TV. This program is produced by Tosin Abiola. Until next week, stay out of trouble and God bless Nigeria.